Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third day of our course. Maybe you want to turn on your camera to say hello and to start the, the day together. Patrick will join us uh, in some minutes. He has trouble in logging to his computer like me yesterday to my tablet. I don't know. Maybe some, some login virus is away. <laughs> well, I hope you slept well and you are now ready to dive deep into the network uh, materials. And let me share my screen. So now you are looking at the timetable, right? And today is Wednesday. I'm going to present uh, you today with a second unit of, of network. Maybe I will not finish it at uh, or on time, so maybe I continue after the break a little bit, and then you will have time to work on uh, the implementation of CMBC in the lab. I changed the timetable here slightly, just added breaks today and tomorrow here, and uh, yeah, renamed the lab. The, the names of the units here to lab CMPC and lab DMPC. So you, during the lab work, you will be free to work whenever you would like, of course. Uh, but we will be there for you in, uh, in the main room. And I uh, spoke to Patrick that we today are going to visit you in your breakout sessions. So we can expect our visits, uh, maybe rather in the afternoon. To check your progress and to, uh, to chat a little bit with you. Okay, and for today, I have to go to the right slide. So the slides are already on share out. And yesterday, I showed this slide. So we are going to look at methods for distributed model predictive control, which reduce the computation time and communications. These two points, reduction of computation time and communications is uh, very important in, uh, in terms of uh, real-time control and real-time uh, distributed MPCs. And this is uh, a point for you to, uh, to do research on if you are starting your PhD right now. I'll explain it in more detail, of course, uh, today. And enhancing feasibility and quality of control, because here we are dealing with uh, sometimes non-convex optimizations and uh, with networks where we cannot guarantee that the data always arrives at, uh, at the target. So we cannot always guarantee feasibility and we can enhance feasibility. And this is uh, very important in this sense. And when I say feasibility here, it means feasibility in uh, to get a solution in a certain time. And the same holds for the quality of control. After uh, we earn feasible solutions, um, yeah, it is time to, to look at the quality of solutions. Yeah. And here, 
So please pay attention to this slide. It's uh, going to be the basic formulation. All uh, following formulation will build, formulations will build on. So this is the basic formulation of network in MPC. And uh, do I have here my pen right? So what you see here, is the formulation you already know from, uh, from NPC. This is just the objective function of uh, agent I. And here you see the constraints of agent I. So the equations in the uh, green boxes we discussed yesterday in, in detail, and these are just uh, uh, formulations um, or the equations you will learn yesterday regarding MPC. The new thing today are the equations in the red boxes. And here the new thing, of course, we are dealing now with agent I. And as I explained yesterday, there are two uh, possibilities to couple decoupled agents. When I say decoupled agents, they are dynamically decoupled in physics, but they share common goals. And these common goals, we, uh, we couple in the optimization problem. An optimization problem consists of an objective function and constraints. So as you would expect the couplings would be either in the, in the objective function or in the constraint. Of course, this or is not the X or could be both, right? Yeah, what we see here is a sum of a J, uh, agent J or agents J are uh, the neighbors of I. So this calligraphic V with uh, the power in brackets I are the neighbors of agent I. So we take the sum of the neighbors and here we couple them over the prediction horizon using a coupling function, CO like coupling and O like objective, coupling in objective between agents I and J. I is the agent we are optimizing for now and J are the neighbors of agent I. And we couple the states here. This is a general formulation. It doesn't mean that we couple all states. You can put a, a coupling function between some uh, a sub, a subset of the states of both agents. For example, for in the case of vehicles, we can couple uh, their velocity or just their position depending on, on our, our goal. And this optimization is subject to, we look at all neighbors of I and we look at all passive agents. So in this formulation, we look at passive agents just in the constraints. If you would like to, you can also put them in the objective, but in, uh, in my definition, passive agents uh, don't act. They, are, they provide just uh, information or data, and we consider them in the constraints. But if, if it makes sense for you, you can also put them in, in the objective. So um, we look here at uh, the coupling between, okay, CC coupling in constraints between I and J, the states of I, and the states of J in the 
reduction horizon. And here we see the coupling between I and passive neighbors. We again look at the states and again in the prediction horizon. So this is uh, all about distributed MPC. So the advantage of net MPC in general is dealing with the action of other agents with respect to their feature intention while making decisions of the agent's own control actions. This sentence just means we have in the green boxes our MPC, and we uh, we look also into the feature. And at the same time, we we take in this prediction the agents, the, the neighbors, and the neighbors could be, of course, passive or active, into consideration. Okay. So. Is this formulation clear to you? Okay. Um, yeah, please. Uh, for me, it's not uh, very, very clear. You have to turn on your microphone, Manel. You are not hearing me. You are not no. hearing me. <laughs> ah. I can hear you. Are you hearing me now? No. <laughs> I can hear. You can hear. Okay, maybe it's me. Ah, okay, it was me. Okay, say it again. Just... I will try you. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, yeah. Fine. Okay, good. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, um, for me, the formulation in, in red is not uh, very, very clean, clear. I didn't uh, understand how do we choose the neighbors. Uh, I mean... Say it again. I, I, di I don't choose neighbors. I mean, uh, it is I understood just neighbors, but I didn't understand the word before neighbors. Uh, how do we assign neighbors? Ah, okay, okay. We will speak it's about based it. Based on the relative distance, it's like we put a circle around the, our uh, host vehicle. Yeah, we will and, speak about it today. And I didn't yeah. get also how many optimization uh, functions do we have since it is J related to I. So if we have 10, we will have 10 J's. It's like a loop we are going to do. Yeah, yes, man. <laughs> this is just the basic optimization problem formulation. This is not, uh, I'm going to speak about uh, your questions. I'm going to answer your okay. questions in the next slides. Okay, thank you. So, uh, the good news uh, from your question is that you are listening. Okay, this is yeah. What I want to tell you about this basic formulation, don't try to code this formulation and to run it, it will not work. Why? Because uh, the essential question here is where we get the states of the neighbors from. Okay, passive neighbors are no problem. We assume that we, we get their states. But where we get the states of, uh, of the neighbors from, which states we, we use in, in this optimization problem. And this lecture is going to be about this topic. Which neighbors we consider and uh, where we get the states from. Okay, but first, so you have to wait a little bit, Marin. Okay, of course. <laughs> First, we, we look at centralized MPC. So in centralized MPC, uh, we have... Okay. Blue is good, right. So we have a center. 
for computations. And the red edges uh, are the coupling graph between the agents. So the red couplings, the red edges, represent the couplings between, between the agents and the, the black one represents the communication to the center and back, right? So we assume here fully coupled graph for coupling for, for the coupling between agents and all agents communicate to the center and the center communicate, communicates to, to all agents. So we look here, we have uh, the agents one to N, they send their states, they measure their state or estimate whatever, they send their, their references and their parameters, model parameters. Uh, what the center uh, should know about the agents to compute a centralized MPC. So all agents from one to N send over the network, the states, reference and parameters to the centralized MPC. Passive agents also provide what the CMPC uh, requires for the computations. So the CMPC formulates a single optimization problem for the whole system, just like MPC, but not just for one agent, it sums over the agents, which means here we take the sum over all agents. The same in the constraints, we consider the constraints of all agents and between all agents, right? So that means what we have here in this MPC is this optimization problem, the basic, sum over all agents of course, without repetition, right? So the result of the CMPC will be the, um, the control inputs to all agents. So the MP CMPC sends again back over the network, the control inputs to the agents the agents apply, again, send the states, references, parameters to the CMPC. The passive agents uh, do the same. The CMPC formulates the central optimization problem, computes again the uh, control inputs, the optimal control inputs, and send them back to the agents over the network. Right. So again, it is just a summation of all optimization problems of all agents. So the uh, good news is going to be optimal, the solution. The bad news, it's not applicable in practice due to high computation time, as you could assume. We uh, optimized over all optimization problems, right? So we, we formulated a very huge optimization problem. Of course, the, uh, the size of the optimization problem depends on the number of agents. If you just are dealing with two or three agents, it uh, may, may no, no problem, may a problem, depends on, on your uh, application. So high competition time and the second drawback is uh, we have a single point of failure, the center. So if the center fails, the whole network fails. So we have two drawbacks, which we uh, don't want to have in, uh, in network systems. But the good news, 
because of optimality, we can use CMPC as a benchmark for comparing different distributed MPC strategies. So we can uh, compare our solutions. So we have a solution to which we always can compare our solutions. So this is uh, the, the good news here. So the, the good news also for, for your thesis is that in case of distributed MPC, there, is, there are solutions. You can also find solutions, but there is no that solution. There is not one solution and you can always uh, improve and, uh, and get better. And you will see during this lecture that you can always Im improve and uh, find better improvements to, to the methods and maybe invent you new methods and, uh, and improve them. And you can also, uh, in, in such cases, you can go to conferences, go to the stage and say, I have a better solution. And every, everyone will, will pay attention. They would try to understand you and they will believe you that uh, there is maybe a better solution because we know that we don't have the solution to, to such problems. Well, and now we, uh, I present you with, with some definitions don't worry, I will go through all definitions. So NCS performance, so we will speak about NC in NCS performance. NCS again is network control systems. So uh, important are uh, stability. I hope you know what is stability is in general. Feasibility if a solution is feasible, so solution feasibility, solution optimality, and solution quality. So we, will, we are going to de define uh, these terms uh, just here in general words without equations uh, in terms of NCS. So the first one is uh, NCS is stable if each of its agents is stable in the network, right? That means uh, not just every agent in terms of its controller is stable, but also each agent in, is stable as a part of, of the network. And you will uh, experience this in the, um, in the lab exercise that it's not enough to, to have stability in each controller, you should consider this controller as a part of the network. The second definition here is a solution is agent feasible if each agent's controller generates a feasible solution in terms of its own optimization problem. So we look at, uh, at each agent separately and uh, look at its optimization problem. Do we get solution or not? And uh, yeah, the solution is agent feasible if we get a solution there. Uh, in convex optimization problems, if the optimization problem of MPC is convex, this is in general no problem. This is uh, getting more problematic in, in sense of uh, non-convex optimization problems because there we cannot uh, guarantee that we get a solution. Um, yeah, this is actually enough that we cannot guarantee finding a solution in at all. Uh, we, we are not speaking about the optimal solution we are asking about getting a solution. We cannot guarantee this for non-convex problems, but for convex, we can, we can guarantee. So a solution is NCS feasible if 
it's feasible in terms of a corresponding CMPC. Now you see a second advantage of CMPC. We can define the feasibility of the NCS with correspondence to the CMPC. So uh, what this means, we take the solution of every agent, put in the CMPC and look, is it feasible or not? Feas solution is feasible in the CMPC if it fulfills all limits and all constraints, of course, right? Yeah. The next definition is a solution is agent optimal if each single agent's controller generates an optimal solution in terms of its own optimization problem. So we defined agent feasible and now agent optimal. So if we look at uh, the optimization problem of this agent and we can say, okay, it is, uh, is the solution optimal or non-optimal? In case of convex problems, we know the feasible solution is the optimal solution. In case of non-convex problems, if we get a feasible solution, we don't know if it is the optimal solution. So in these cases, in case, in case of non-convex problems, we have to, uh, to consider also the optimality of the solution of each agent. So a solution is NCS optimal if it is optimal in terms of a corresponding CMBC. So we take the solution of each agent, put in, in the CMBC, and if we get the same solution as CMBC, then it is uh, optimal, which we don't expect, expect right? And we will see uh, why. And that's why we define NCS quality because we kept compare our solutions always to, to the um, to the CMPC is defined as the quality of a solution compared with the solution of CMPC. So um, we in in our formulations of uh, MPC and PMPC in in general, we. Um, we have minimization problems. So if we want to compare two minimal solutions, so you can take the solution of uh, DMPC divided by the solution of CMPC. And uh, yeah, you know the, the quality of, of your solution. So that's a comparison to an optimal solution, the, the minimal, uh, because it's a minimization problem. There is an assumption we have to meet, but this assumption is uh, is okay. It is, it, it's fine uh, to make this assumption. A solution to CMPC exists because if we don't have a solution to the CMPC, we, uh, we don't need to, to try to distribute the uh, yeah, the optimization problem, right? So if a center uh, cannot find a solution, then we can we cannot ask the agents to find the uh, or solutions. So a solution exists and it is NCS stable, feasible, and optimal. So in uh, in this sense. Feasible and optimal are the same because uh, if we ask the CMPC to deliver an optimal solution, then it is, of course, feasible. So it is stable and optimal. Maybe here a note on stability and feasibility. Feasibility means we get a solution from the optimization problem. And stability means this solution is stable. So these terms, uh, are different. Not every solution of an optimization problem of MPC is also stable. So 
you can understand stable solutions as a subset of feasible solutions of the optimization problems. And if we speak here about optimality, it is always in terms of the modeling of our optimization problem, right? We look always at our modeling or the optimization problem. We don't argue that uh, a solution is in general optimal. So this is also very important to, to know that this is, uh, yeah, a, a freedom in, uh, in finding solutions is the modeling step, how you model your optimization problem. I'm again using the word model, but again, I don't mean here the dynamic model. I mean how you uh, build your optimization problem. So there is maybe a question. No questions? Okay, then we continue. So we look at cooperative distributed MPC. So the first distributed MPC. So we look at, at the graph and here we choose a communication graph which coincides with the communication graph. So coupling and communications are the same here. So that means every two coupled agents can also communicate, which is a basic uh, assumption. Uh, sorry, so um, even previously when you, you showed us uh, the previous diagram, what do we mean by coupling the red uh, the red uh, lines that uh, that uh, lies between the agents? Yeah. Uh, Coupling means that the agents share a common goal. For example, uh, for example, for uh, trajectory planning, it is collision avoidance. Okay. Yeah, but in general, it is uh, a link between the agents, and they should collaborate to or cooperate or do something together, network, to, uh, to do something uh, common. Okay, thank you. Good. Right. Um, yeah, I was looking at, uh, at the coupling graph. Here we have uh, first cooperative distributed MPC. So I may firstly explain the, the term cooperative. Cooperative means each agent computes op, uh, the optimization problems also of its neighbors, right? So I uh, maybe explain it here in terms of directly optimization. So the optimization problem of agent one is its own optimization problem plus the optimization problem of two. Plus the optimization problem of three plus the optimization problem of four. And in each agent, we have uh, the same again. So you may now ask, what is the difference between centralized and uh, cooperative, the MPC? And the difference will come now, alpha, one, two, alpha, one, three, alpha, one, four. So the difference is that we take the actions of neighbors into 
consideration here by optimizing uh, their optimization problems, but we take them just partially into, into account. And Can I ask a question? Yeah. So why do you include optimization problem of agent three in the in the one that calculates agent one? Because one and three are not connected in this figure. Yeah, you're right. This would be my next point. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is gen the general form formulation of uh, first CMBC, and I put. Uh, the alphas and um, alpha is something between zero and one. So if it is one, it turns the CMPC optimization problem. If it is zero, then there is no coupling or no communication between uh, the agents. And in case, in case of three, there is no, um, no coupling means here, uh, alpha one three goes to to zero. Uh, Sorry, so one more question. <clears throat> you explained it once, uh, but I want to repeat uh, to, to ask it again. Can you again explain what is the coupling, or what do you mean by coupling? Okay, uh, coupling is uh, sharing a common goal. For example, if uh, if we have uh, here, I'll take just, just an example, right? Here we have two vehicles driving towards, towards uh, each other. Here is the reference trajectory of both, and they have to, uh, to share a coupling. They have to share a common goal, which means, uh, which is here uh, not to collide with each other. So function, isn't, it, is it, isn't it the goal of the entire system? I mean, all V1, V2, V4, V3, they are aiming not, yeah. for example, colliding. The, the coupling is between agents. Um, the coupling here, a coupling between one and four, one and two exists, but not between one and three. A coupling exists between two and three and three and four. Two and four also. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, concerning the optimization function, if we are going to write the same <clears throat> uh, equation for all uh, for all the agent, what would differ? For example, optimization one, it's J one plus alpha J two plus. If I'm going to write the same for op two, for the agent two, it's going to be the same. It means nothing will change. Uh, no, for for two, uh, we can write it down. For two, we have two <clears throat> plus uh, alpha two one j one plus alpha two four j four plus alpha two, three, J three. So you see the, the difference? Yeah, it has connection. But two is connected to all agents, but one is connected just to two and four. Okay. And for uh, the individual J's, they are defined uh, like the, you showed us before in the equation. It means the simple, the general standard uh, optimization uh, or objective function plus uh, the constraint that is added between uh, neighbors, neighbors. Yeah. Each yeah. J is computed like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Of course, I didn't write the constraints down, but the constraints also exist between the neighbors, right? I just wrote uh, the objective functions down here. Fine, uh, let us look at, uh, at this drawing here. Here we have agent I 
and its controller. You see here the feedback. The agent itself sends the states, the reference, and the parameters to its controller, as we, as we would do in, in MPC, right? And here over the network, we get the same, means the states, reference, and parameters of other agents over the network. So it is, if you look at CMPC, it is the same as in CMPC, but we don't uh, communicate to, the, to a center. The communication is directly between the agents. Right? And of course, each agent or each controller uh, considers passive agents and each controller computes its own optimal control input. You may now ask, well, I included the optimization problems of the neighbors and I computed optimal control inputs for them. What I do uh, with these control inputs? The answer is I throw away. Right? So like in, in MPC, we compute a sequence of control inputs, but we apply just the first. And the same or similarly here, we compute uh, optimal inputs for the agent and for its neighbors, but we apply just the first one in our agent. And now you, uh, you may ask, and the other agents, they do the, the same. And maybe now you noticed a problem. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Uh, Please, show. Yeah, I'm a bit confused here, actually. Like, for me, it feels like this problem formulation is even more, like, yeah, the size of it is even more, is even bigger than the centralized MPC. I don't, uh, I'm not sure if I'm like, if I understand it correctly, but like each of this J, is it just the objective function or is it the, the optimization problem itself? Yeah, it's uh, a good- Because I feel like you, you, you if it's object, uh, if it's optimization problem, then you like kind of like repeating part of the like overlapping yeah. problems again and again. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to speak about this point in, in a minute. So here, you're, you're right. If we sum the optimization problems in each agent, then we have uh, yeah, more effort, let's say, because we don't uh, solve one optimization problem, we solve many optimization problems. And, uh, but each optimization problem of cooperative DMPC is smaller than the one of CMPC. So uh, I may write like this. So optimization problem of, uh, of agents, of each agent is smaller than the optimization problem of the centralized MPC. Means here the size of the optimization problem. And the size, uh, of course, corresponds to, uh, to the computation time. Right? So what people do here, and this is the point I'm going to uh, to speak about now. People say, well, if I want to uh, consider all agents in the network, then I get the optimization problem of, of CMPC. And it's again, huge optimization problem, big computation time, what I can do. And uh, there is, uh, common definition in literature 
some people say, okay, let us not optimize all uh, for all agents in one agent, which means uh, let's take uh, agent one. So agent one would optimize not for all agents in the network, but just for the neighbors, the direct neighbors, and it considers the couplings between the neighbors, right? So means from the point of view of agent one, this network exists, right? From the point of view of agent two, the whole network exists because all our neighbors here, right? Um, maybe other kind of from the from for V for agent three, this is its network. And for I don't know, maybe this is a good color, right? Yeah, this uh, like two, it has the, the whole network. The whole network minus the, the two uh, edges. Right. Yeah, in, it, in, in two and four, in this example, we have the same optimization problem as in CMPC. And in agent one, we have the optimization problem of one, two, and four. And in three, we have the optimization problem of three, two, and four. Can I also ask another question? Yeah. Um, if you write for the optimization problem of one J4, would that also involve the coupling of uh, agent four with its neighboring agent, so also coupling with agent three, etc. So one should know with whom four is coupled. Yeah, this uh, yeah, this is a question here. Uh, I mean, your questions are all all good questions, and you they they could be also research questions for yeah for good. Uh, PhD thesis. Um, yeah, the approach I uh, I presented now that each agent considers its own optimization problem and the optimization problem of the neighbors and of course the couplings between the, the neighbors uh, is one approach. Uh, people ask, okay, uh, first, before continuing, I would like to to, to point out uh, the problem here. Do, do you see a, a problem in this approach? If we have a lot of uh, agents, we will have very big uh, number. I mean, as soon as the number of agents increases, it converges to CMPC. Mm. One, I see one. another problem. Yes. Uh, collisions might happen uh, if if agent one considers only two and four. It cannot account, as Dennis said, for number three. And uh, agent one may have a wrong prediction of what agent two will do. Yeah, uh, both answers are good. Um, the, but I will start with the answer of Ivan. So um, it is actually written here. If agent just considers hypothetical plans of its neighbors. So we have an optimization problem in one where we optimize for two, right? And we think we have considered two, but two considers also four. And in one, we could, don't consider four. Uh, no, um, I have to, to repeat. One considers two and thinks that it 
has a plan of two, but two considers also three, and one doesn't consider three. So the plan in one about two is not the plan in two about uh, itself. So this is related to the game of yesterday. Do I think about you what you think about yourself? Do I think about in, in general, if, you, if we consider a network, do I uh, think about the network, what the network thinks about itself? Can I ask a question about it? Yeah. So it's related to my previous question. Um, so the optimization problem of one, if we, for example, write J2 there, um, then it's not the J2 exactly filled in with the formulation we had on slide 39. So the basic formulation. Uh, Dennis, you may repeat your question. I couldn't uh, understand. So on slide, on slide 39, you presented the basic formulation uh, with uh, the objective function for agent I. Um, and if we, for example, write J2 in the optimization problem of agent one, would that J2 uh, be filled in with that formulation on slide 39? Or would we exclude agent three from that formulation? Because that's not what one has information about. Yeah, if you would like to see the equations, they are here. <laughs> so uh, it, of course, one excludes three from its optimization problem. So one considers two and four. So here you see the, the general form formulation. Here we have the optimization problem of, uh, of agent I. We optimize uh, for the whole network, for the whole network from the point of view of agent one, of course. Yeah, here we have uh, the normal MPC uh, of, of one and here. So here the, uh, the evaluation until HP minus one and here the evaluation of, of HP. Yeah, and here we have uh, its uh, decision variable. And here we start with a network. And here we, we consider all neighbors with alphas. And here we have the optimization uh, problem of the neighbors first. Yeah, it, equation uh, 319B is the same as 319A. Uh, we just changed the index from I to J. And here we have the coupling between I and J. And we write it down for all neighbors of of I. So this is not recursive in the sense that um, the optimization problem of two that is considered in agent one also involves the coupling of agent two and agent three. Yes, it involves the coupling of two and three, right? So in agent uh, one. Yeah, uh, no, no, not two and three. I, uh, yeah, between two and four. So in agent one, we consider the coupling between, uh, in one, we consider the coupling between two and four, but not the coupling between two and three, because okay. we don't have information about three. So yeah. first here, we have the normal MPC of I, the normal MPC of J, of the neighbors, right? And then we can consider the couplings. I cannot consider the coupling between two and three if I don't have information about three. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the coupling that you mean here is only between uh, one uh, and two and one and four. Say it again, between one and two and one, one and, four. and four. Right, right, right. Uh, no, between one and two, one and four, two and four.
Uh, so can I see your formulation again? Can you switch back to your formulation? Yeah, please. Uh, I mean, can you switch back to, to the previous page with your... Uh, here, you mean? I didn't get you, Shao. You have a question to... No, no, I was just, the, I wanted to see where the coupling between two and four is. Okay, nice. Uh, okay, okay, fine. Um, so... Oh, wait. Yeah, so, so I think, uh, I think this is just between one and two and one and four, right? Because in that sum, in 3.19, you just consider the neighbor, na the neighbor of one, let's see. Uh, no, the, na the neighbors of, of one and between the neighbors of, of one also. Mm. Uh, you, you asking, where, where is it? Here is the coupling between the neighbors in this equation. So here, equation 319C is the coupling equation. And here, the first part of it is the coupling between I and J. And here is the coupling between the neighbors. So here we find between one and two and one and four, and here between two and four. I hope it's right, yeah. Uh, may I say something that I don't quite understand? I'm not really sure uh, about the B part of the equation, because if you go to the other slide, uh, you say that the exchange of, inf of information is about the states, the position, and all that. And uh, equation 3.19B uh, assumes yeah, that agent I knows the optimization problem of agent J. So for example, the, the term LX, J, because I mean that the agents exchange the, their states, right? If yeah, you go they, to the other slide, they, they exchange the, the, their states, so. Yeah, they exchange states, they, reference, and parameters. Okay, so based on this information, how can we assume for agent I that we know the optimization problem or the formulation of the optimization problem for agent J? This is my question. Okay, we have because this is not, because this is not communicated in this graph at least. Because, I mean, I mean, I under, I understand in the equation number C, I understand the coupling because it's. For example, it can be a quadratic term that says, okay, I get the state of the other agent. And then based on this term, I want to keep a, let's say a, a, a distance between him. So it's an attractive or a repulsive uh, force, let's say. This part I, uh, I understand, but in order for me as agent I to be able to solve the optimization problem of agent J, it means that not only I need its state, and this information shown in this slide, but also I, 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 he has to tell me what is the objective function that he is using. Okay, I'm assuming here, of course, you're totally right. I'm assuming here that uh, the, the objective of the network is, is known to all agents. For example, okay. here, uh, the following of a reference, uh, maybe um, you don't see my... Okay, yeah, here, for example, here following a reference trajectory and don't collide with each other is uh, known to all agents. Of okay. Yeah. So, okay, so each agent assumes that they solve the same optimization problem from each other's perspective though. Yeah. This is what you mean. It, okay. Um, yeah, the same optimization problem. You have to be uh, to pay attention to 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 this. Uh, it is not the same optimization problem in mathematical sense. It's the same optimization problem in uh, in the sense of uh, 
the goal, right? Okay. I I think you you understand what I mean. Right? I think. So yes. all yeah, all agents uh, know what is uh, what is the goal in this network, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. So, Ivan, uh, you you said it right, and uh, before that, Manel said, "Ah, okay, uh, the optimization problems are very huge, and you both are right. Uh, first, we have the this problem, and second, uh, people ask, okay, why should I solve such large problems, as Manel said?" if I don't guarantee finding a solution. So this is actually the main problem in, in cooperative DMPC. It's cooperative, nice. Cooperative is, uh, is something nice. We, we want to have uh, cooperations, but you see that cooperation is costly and we don't, uh, we don't guarantee finding solutions. So there, there are, or, uh, Let's say in, in general, the open question you could follow in your thesis, finding the right alphas here. So this is a research question for you. Um, yeah, but. It means in, uh, firstly, which agents are coupled and which agents we couple. So I said it's an approach to reduce the computation time is to consider that just the direct neighbors. But if you continue and say, ah, okay, con considering the direct neighbors is not enough. I should consider maybe the neighbors of the neighbors but how about the neighbors of the neighbors of the neighbors? And if you consider them, how about the neighbors of the neighbors of the neighbors of the neighbors and so on, right? And uh, this you can express using alpha saying, okay, it is zero if there is no coupling or no communication or no cooperation. And I call alpha cooperation factor, right? And uh, if I consider agent two in agent one, maybe I say, okay, uh, I know that agent two has also neighbors. I am not going to take it seriously. And maybe just, I take its objective just with, I don't know, 0.5, because I know it, it has neighbors. Uh, could I guarantee finding a solution in, in such a case? This is, uh, this is the question here. Of course, uh, I am telling you here, it is about finding the right alphas, but uh, yeah, you have to go deep into, into methods to, to speak about this alpha. I mean, uh, the problem formulation is represented by this alpha, but the way is uh, not just uh, trying and thinking about uh, some values of alpha. You may first uh, think, okay, uh, maybe I want to, to have an adaptive uh, coupling. Means I consider agents adaptively. Maybe, uh, maybe you look at the graph and say, okay, I, um, I look at agent maybe Two here. This is actually a small example. You have to, to have more complicated example, but for our lecture, it's uh, easier for me to, to use such a small example. But if you want to, to continue, you can say, okay, I look at agents who, uh, who have uh, a lot of couplings and I consider them more strongly than agents which have less couplings. And I may not stop at the direct neighbors. Why should I always stop at the direct neighbors? I could also continue to, uh, to the next neighbor 
but it, for example, in, in, in this question here, continuing to, from the point of view of one, if we continue to consider three, and from the point of view of three, we continue to consider one, then uh, we have the centralized optimization problem in each agent, and we can guarantee that we find feasible solutions, right? But in this case, we have to add a coupling between one and three. Do you have further questions? It's very interesting. This is uh, a concrete problem of the network thinking. I have a question. Yeah. Um, when considering the implementation of MPC, um, how would you decide? I mean, if you have a very powerful main computer in a lab that can access all vehicles or drones or whatever, um, then it may be uh, more efficient to calculate CMPC on this powerful computer than having these separate optimization problems on embedded hardware, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Uh, this is theoretically right, but practically uh, you you will face many problems. For example, if you take traffic, maybe traffic intersections, you should provide every traffic intersection in all cities with powerful computers. So it's uh, yeah, more effort than providing each vehicle with each with its uh, let's say small sized computer. Um, this is an argument. Further arguments could be uh, it's not possible at all. For example, take energy networks. Um, yeah, how, how, how would you uh, set up a centralized MPC, centralized optimization for, for the whole network? How do you want to solve it? I, I would assume that the supercomputer of the world cannot do it. Yeah, okay, so you mean if it if there are really a lot of agents involved, then it's not possible to run CMPC anymore? Yeah, I'll, uh, I should show you today uh, an example where CMPC cannot be run. Okay, yeah, thanks. Work. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, here in this small diagram, uh, the passive agents are the neighbor? Okay, I don't uh, distinguish here between active and uh, passive. Uh, yeah, just take some some additional passive agents here. Okay, maybe this is passive. So I am just considering active agents here. But what do I mean uh, passive? It means the agent that were considered before in the considered uh, agents now. For example, uh, V4 is related to V1 and V3. We are going to take V2 since v V2 is a passive agent for V1. That's what we mean. It means V1 was taken into account when we calculated the optimization problem of, uh, v, uh, of V1. Um, I don't get uh, the passive agent. Uh, so passive agents are agents who are not uh, autonomous. For example, consider traffic and assume we have uh, introduced autonomous cars, but we don't introduce them at once. So we have a hybrid or a mixed traffic between autonomous and non-autonomous uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. And uh, passive agents are something like, uh, in traffic, we will always have passive agents, for example, pedestrians how how do you want to uh, to to consider them as uh, as active agents you have uh, we assume here that we can control them so if we if uh, yeah in this case i would assume that uh, a controller could control control your motion so we can consider pedestrians just as passive agents 
So passive agents are agents that are not uh, presented in this network, but they uh, affect the solution of the optimization problem. Yes. We should take them into account in order to avoid a, coll a collision with uh, these agents. Yes, I, I'm going to show you also examples today where we okay. where will you uh, see uh, passive and active agents. Okay, thank you. I just have one more question. Yes, Ivan. Uh, so now that you mentioned that passive agents are basically pedestrians, you can account for their behavior, but you cannot control them. Um, do you have maybe some examples with that? Where you have interaction between uh, connected vehicle and pedestrian? An example where we would have an interaction yeah, or some papers. I would be interested in that. Ah, okay, okay. I, you mean where the vehicle uh, accounts for pedestrians, not only other vehicles. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I. I know a group in Madrid at the University of uh, Alcala. Okay, Victoria is here. But she is at another university. I'll look up the, the name of the group and I'll send you. Yeah, great. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, I'm also interested in, in this topic. Maybe can I also get the list of literature? Yeah, I, uh, I can pick up. Yeah. So you can. Uh, so I provide you with a starting point for, for this topic. So they, uh, the, the main problem of considering pedestrians is uh, predicting their movement. If you know their movement in the future, the solution is easy. Just put them in the optimization problem and uh, consider them. So the main problem of, uh, in general, passive agents is their predictions. Here in, uh, in this lecture, for simplicity, we assume that we know the predictions of, of passive agents, but this is a totally uh, um, other topic to, yeah, to consider predictions of passive agents. Um, maybe if you are interested, I can also provide you with uh, so, so I provide also you also with literature uh, also for um, in general how to predict non um, the motion of non autom. Uh, of non-autonomous uh, vehicles, yeah. Maybe a first hint on, on this, you can, uh, you can imagine it. Uh, use the model we presented on Monday with velocity and uh, as input, x, y, and psi as states. And you can use this model for, for prediction, but uh, the question is about the inputs. Uh, for example, if you use, if we use velocity and steering angle as, uh, as inputs, the question is, uh, yeah, how the velocity and, uh, and steering angle will evolve in, uh, in the future. Um, yeah, in, in general, you can, uh, a way of modeling this is to model them in, in sets to say, okay, I don't know exactly it's something between, I don't know, 30 and 50 kilometers per hour, per hour the, the vehicles are going to, to travel with. And you can put this in the model and uh, compute uh, how this uncertainty would will uh, influence 
the prediction. And um, actually, we are drifting from the main topic uh, also to consider um, a way is to do the, predi the predictions and to say how certain the predictions are. The other way is to consider this uncertainty in, uh, in control using robust control, right? So I hope I, I gave you an idea on, on this topic, but uh, I think we should continue in our lecture. Maybe we will need the afternoon again today. So what Ivan described of uh, agent one, that it considers two and four, and two considers additionally three, and what one thinks about two, it is not what two thinks about two. We have a definition of this, and we call it prediction consistency. And predict prediction consistency is defined as follows. It means that the predictions xj used or computed in the optimization problem of an agent i at a time instance t for an agent j coincide with the predictions computed in agent j itself at the same time instant t. So with other words, what I think about you, you think about yourself. Then our uh, thinking is consistent. Right? And without the satisfaction of this property, no guarantee for NCS stability and feasibility can be given. And um, yeah, this is actually the point here in, in the alphas to ensure this, uh, this property, to find alphas to ensure this property. So cooperative DMPC doesn't satisfy the prediction consistency property, as you noticed, Ivan, or I hope all of you uh, understand it now. Uh, and I, here I have an exception and you already mentioned this exception, if the NCS is fully connected, then all agents are neighbors, right? And in this case, cooperative DMPC becomes CMPC except the communication structure, right? In CMPC, all agents communicate to a center and the center communicates the control inputs back to the agents. And in cooperative DMPC, the agent uh, um, yeah, communicate directly with each other. So, and we have, as Manel said, high computation time. Actually, this is all about um, cooperative DMPC and about uh, open questions uh, there. So possible solutions in, in the literature uh, are adaptively considering of neighbors, finding the right alphas. Um, uh, further possible solutions are iterations, that means uh, first try to find a solution in, in one, considering two, and again, uh, when, when, when two, consider three, again, consider two, or solve in one uh, after solving in two, and uh, yeah, in, in general, let's say the, the solution is to go for iterative algorithms, but uh, we... Sorry. Yeah. I have a question concerning this um, iterative algorithm. Uh, so in here, in cooperative DMPC, 
um, the opt optimization is done uh, instantaneously. It means at the same instant, we optimize for uh, agent one, two, and... Uh, yeah, but you mean, it, yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah. You mean in parallel, right? Yeah, in parallel, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, uh, however, as you said, using iteration, it's like we are doing it. Uh, I don't know, In, I don't see that it's realistic, uh, I mean. Yeah, you are right. That's why... Because we will have a lot of delays and maybe uh, the agent will change its behavior when we are going to find the solution for it. it uh, I don't know. Yeah, you are totally right. And that's why we are going to speak about the next uh, method. So... Uh, uh, sorry, can I just ask yeah. one more question here? Uh, Yes. So, so is, is is there any research about like uh, perhaps incorporating like the robust MPC thinking in this cooperative uh, MPC? Like yes, to... yes, yes. You find you find a lot. I can also uh, put some literature in uh, in the shared out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. There is a group from England uh, who. Uh, studied this, right? Yeah. Manuel, uh, your prediction horizon is uh, is always longer than the slides. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would suggest to, to take a break now. I need a copy to, to be able to continue this topic. Uh, maybe 15 minutes and we continue again. Okay. So let us meet at uh, 10.40 again. Okay.